This is the Geekum AS6 Mini PC. It comes packed with a whole wide range of specs, including AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX and a AMD Radeon 680M. So uh, this was something that Geekum sent. Uh, we're gonna take a review of this and use this more for a server aspect. I really love these mini PCs for that, um, but these also have great graphics in them as well, and you could easily upgrade it. Also, they're really small, they're power efficient, and they don't actually require a huge amount of, and overall, this box reminds me a lot of like the Xbox One, um, that's what it looks like, um, but we got the power connector and the power plugs all in there. They're both an 8K UHD, very nice cable, on top of some additional screws, power cables, mounting brackets, etc. Um, let's go through and upgrade this. It's got a lot of ports on the bottom, a lot of goodness there. So this currently is equipped with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Uh, so we need sadly 64 gigabytes for a vanilla Minecraft server, believe that or not. Um, so this is going to have to be upgraded um, also, Kingston sent over some of their 64 gigabytes of DDR5, 5,600 megahertz. Oh, wow. One thing I noticed when I was taking this apart is that there is this ribbon cable, and I found this kind of to be in a very awkward situation. Um, I'm, you definitely can, like, un connect the ribbon cable um, but if you do it's a little difficult to get back in there obviously you're not going to be taking apart the pc a whole bunch um, and it was a pretty easy to install situation but just keep that in mind as well um, we have this mini pc that currently uh, we are going to compare it to it's got the previous generation 5900 hx in it and also the built-in graphics with that this is also what served as the um, minecraft server that a lot of you guys have played on before um, previously and so we're going to kind of run it through the same tests as well. Now, don't worry, we're not just going to do like Minecraft related things. Um, a lot of the reason why I'm doing the Minecraft stuff is because these are like my favorite thing to have as little home hosted servers. They're really cheap to run. Um, the hardware on them is really nice and they're really good to kind of tuck away. They're a little bit loud um, and we'll also do a sound test towards the end as well. Um, so we've got a couple other games than just Minecraft. Now I would like to point out some exceptionally good pros to this device. The first of those is that this comes with a lot of display outputs. You technically have five possible display outputs, the HDMI's and then the display port on the back, as well as a micro USB display port on the front and back, two USBs on the front, an additional three on the back with direct ethernet connection. In terms of form factor, this is pretty solid and even smaller than a lot of the other stuff that we took a look at, especially with this Morphine S500 Plus. Having the ability to upgrade this and include additional RAM DIMMs makes it a plus as well. You can include different M.2 drives, and especially as we saw in previous reviews, especially of the Ace Magic AM20, that PC had soldered on RAM, only had the ability to upgrade the M.2 slots. While having a last generation processor, this does still create a lot of options in terms of upgradability. And especially when it comes to running something simple, kind of like a Minecraft server, this is really great. There are some features I'd like you to keep in mind though, in terms of other computers. Some mini PCs have adopted a wireless charging port on the top, which I think can be a great added plus for a lot of people sitting this on their desk. Another thing to talk about is price. This PC currently costs about $750 on Geekum's website. Now compared to a lot of the things that are out there, especially that Ace Magic AM20, while it doesn't have half the upgradability options, it does have pretty much the same processor as well as the DDR5 as well and the same graphics chip inside. So it really does raise a valid question if you do need this upgrade ability, the ability to put a 2.5 inch SATA drive inside of here. If you want the ability to take this and upgrade the RAM up to 32, 64 gigabytes, which is something you really can't do with such a small form factor. But then again, this is slightly larger than that PC. I personally prefer the additional upgrade ability options, especially when it comes to that. But if you're just getting something small for your desk, Definitely get the higher end memory for a solder on device, but it is a valid proposition, especially being about $200 cheaper. 
So in order for the Minecraft server test, I basically loaded up a bunch of people onto my Minecraft world. Um, a bunch of different people were playing on there, all doing kind of a sort of different tasks that would normally cause problems. Um, this is a very single threaded uh, processor focused test. Obviously Minecraft is, especially the server algorithm, is poorly optimized. So as you can see here, a lot of people doing assorted things. And we'll do a TPS test, which is basically the speed in which the game runs. And that's at about 18 and a half. And then once we switch over to the new system with the new 6900HX, um, we see pretty much solid 20. Um, basically, think of it like, uh, you know, anything lower than 20 is not ideal. Honestly, 18 is still pretty solid. So just to show that this is pretty a pretty large substantial improvement on the single core processor test. Another test that I want to run is the modded Minecraft test. Um, we'll take a look at some other games in a second, but this is really these mini PCs do great for like Minecraft little computers that people can give their kids. Um, and honestly, we're going to just do some testing with some modded Minecraft. I like to include shaders, which is a common graphics heavy focus test. Um, and this basically allows us to kind of see compare to at least the previous generation processor wise. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen here, especially in regards to cooling. So when it finally came time to actually get the output of this, I saw about 48 FPS with shaders, 140 without. And I saw FPS dips as low as like 28 FPS in reality. My experience testing this, I started playing other games other than Minecraft. Um, there's a reason why we do this is because Minecraft's kind of a joke. And I was playing some Fortnite, casually going along, waiting in the lobby. And I had my game shut off a couple times, like completely black screen, shut off the entire PC, etc. And, you know, this is usually a sign that like something's wrong when it comes to power, like it's not getting enough power. So I originally had gotten this PC back before it came out and obviously I was having issues with it. I sent it back to them and they sent me another one. Um, and this one actually did not have any of these issues whatsoever. There was no issues with screens not working. There was no issues with it crashing. So I'm definitely noticing that uh, probably something might have been wrong with the specific system. I also noticed that they put out a BIOS update. So it's also potential. there's also the potential that they patched it. However, I can happily say now that there is no issues with that. Graphics drivers were not working at all so if i like turned off my monitor or unplugged the monitor anything that was going on would just like pause or crash uh, it was very weird so i updated the graphics drivers and that seemed to solve that problem another good indication of a mini pc's performance is how well it's cooled um, a lot of times you'll find that basically all these mini pcs have the exact same hardware in them and the only difference setting them apart is how well they're cooled so what we do here is we're going to do a benchmark like a stress test stress the cpu stress the gpu and based off of that, we can see how well this will perform compared to other PCs based off of how well it's cooled. If it's cooled poorly, it will actually perform worse than a lot of the other mini PCs with these same specs. And if it's cooled better, then it will perform much better than the other PCs because it will be able to boost higher and basically put out more frames. Compared to the Morphine mini PC that we had previously, this is about a five decibel reduction. And also I give credit because this is not a super high pitched wine as well. It's something that's a little bit more lower pitched and also by having a smaller volume, um, I also want to point that out as well, that this does a better job with that sound. It's not a huge improvement, and this is still something that I wouldn't want to put next to a microphone, um, but it's definitely a large uh, improvement compared to some of the other mini PCs we've looked at. In conclusion, I think this is a pretty solid mini PC. It's got a lot of upgradability options, you can throw more RAM in there. It's also pretty moderately sized, so it's not anything too crazy, but in terms of mini PCs, I'd say it's about average. It's got lots of connectivity on the front and back, and has lots of ports, also the ability for plenty of monitors, up to four of them. So I definitely think that overall, given the ability for this to be upgraded and everything included, it does. it's pretty quiet. I think it's a pretty solid bet if you're really interested in getting something with the graphical performance of a 1050 Ti.